because you're, you're never going to find deep desire. Like all of this stuff has to be architected. So people mistake the human animal for having these things hiding inside of them. And, and I will just give you the punchline, they do not. So no one is born with a passion, right? Imagine me saying that Steve Jobs was born with a passion for technology. What, what if he had been born 7,000 years ago, 50,000 years ago? Would he still have that? Would he be dreaming of the iPhone? I'm always telling people, look, the, the punchline of life is not wealth, it's not fame, it's not admiration, it's how you feel about yourself when you're by yourself. That doesn't require wealth. In fact, wealth can't touch that. So if you had said, what do I think of people that say, find your passion, I will say they mean very well, but they don't understand what passion actually is. So I think because a rare breed of individual develops a passion when they're young, they then mistake it for, I found my passion, but that's not really true. So I'll walk you through my own. So I loved movies as a kid. So that is what I call, you get that first glimmer of enjoyment. You're interested in that thing. So I was interested in films. And then it became, my dad brought home a video camera and that allowed me to engage with it. Now engaging with the filmmaking process made me realize, whoa, I'm actually I'm not interested in this. I'm fascinated by it. And the more I learned about it, the more I wanted to learn. And so that led me to film school. And then in film school, I began mastering my craft. Now the pursuit of mastery, when you realize that you can not only do something for yourself, but you can influence the world. And through this filmmaking, I could actually have an impact on other people. That becomes the real passion because you're developing the set of skills that means something to you and it allows you to do something in the world that other people cannot do. So it goes interest, to fascination through engagement, engagement to mastery through the learning process. And if at that point you like the way it makes you feel to do it and to impact the people the way that you're impacting them, then that's your passion. But passion is like this, it's like love, if I may. It has to be requited. If it's unrequited and it's you're doing something but the world doesn't care about it, I don't think it will ever really be a passion. It's gotta be something that gives you this positive feedback loop. Just serving yourself, I don't think it will ever be quite the um, optimistic, uplifting, self-continuing thing. That it, um, so when you're serving other people and you're doing something that up, uplifts other people, but it, with a skill set that you had to work your ass off to get, and it's a skill set that you love and you love the acquisition of that skill set, then there's like a, like there's a light airiness to it that feels uplifting. And if you can get in that loop, then you're good. They don't want it badly enough. Yeah. People just have to accept, if you're not getting the results you want, you've not learned the skills that you need to learn. It's just that simple. And why don't they want it bad enough? Because it's not really something that's at important to their core? Because you're, you're never going to find deep desire. Like all of this stuff has to be architected. So people mistake the human animal for having these things hiding inside of them. And, and I will just give you the punchline, they do not. So no one is born with a passion. Right? Imagine me saying that Steve Jobs was born with a passion for technology. What, what if he had been born 7,000 years ago, 50,000 years ago? Would he still have that? Would he be dreaming of the iPhone? No, of course not. So where you grow up is going to influence your outcomes far more than who you are. Like, this is terrifying. The greatest predictor of your future success is the zip code in which you grow up. It's not your IQ. It's all about like, what, what are you going to build? Like at what point do you look inside the brain and go, oh, this is how it works. And so I'm going to build desire. So building desire is one of the most misunderstood things in the world. It's like when people say, oh my God, I'm in love with this woman and they think it's gonna be like that forever. And when that wanes and they break up and they keep chasing that initial high without recognizing that's just not the truth of human neurochemistry. It's never gonna be like that. So it starts you know, with that just all-consuming drug-like quality and then it smooths out into something that's long-term pair bonding. And you have to know how to ride those waves. So desire is very much the same. You have to learn how to fan those flames. You have to take an ember of interest and turn it into a raging inferno. So when I was at Quest, my raging inferno, my reason for existing was to end metabolic disease. Well, now I'm doing impact theory and I'm not thinking about metabolic disease anymore. I'm thinking about the um, you know, poor mindset and I'm trying to save people from their zip code is an easy way to think of it. And so I fanned those flames, which was something I wasn't even thinking about when I was at Quest. So it's like, you can very much pivot. You can decide, 
But it has to be something real. Like these are real things. I really did care about ending metabolic disease because of my family. I really do care about the zip code being a predictor because of people I've loved in my life who have been, who have succumbed to that and my inability to help them up to this point. So it's like you take that initial spark and then you, you cultivate it yeah. like you would a fire. Life is going to be a grand struggle until you understand that you are a chemical processing plant. And once you understand how to take control of the chemical processing, and then you can do virtually anything you want, you can create desire, um, you can stay focused, you can improve, um, but you really do have to put yourself in a position to adapt or die. Your body has to believe. Those are my two options, adapt or die. And then it really will adapt. And so I put myself under that insane amount of pressure to change my body, to change my mind, um, and then that has, I've reaped dividends as a reward. And so once you got that, that whole brain science in your head, you were like, okay, now I can treat this as a, as a machine, as a biochemical machine, and I'm gonna start playing with it and see what I can do. Correct. And you started having successes in these different parts of your life. And you also showed you could do it with the right mindset. And so you started seeing that, okay, I can do this, I can do this, and I can do this. I don't want people focused on the money because the money's not gonna change how you feel. But if you focus on the fulfillment of technique, building up this rad skill set that's letting you serve yourself and other people, and then marry it to business savvy, your odds of becoming financially successful skyrocket. So that's where I hope people get their heads around that fulfillment really is the punchline. But if you want to express that in a way that generates wealth for yourself, it is very, very real. That is a very real possibility. Uh, how do you figure out your purpose? All right, this one is very easy and it goes like this. Inside of you right now, based on the things that you've encountered in your life, there are areas of interest. That's it. There, you're not going to go inside and discover that you have this hidden passion or purpose lying within you, what you're gonna realize is that you have areas of interest. You're going to engage with those areas of interest. Those areas of interest then why they're turned into something that you're legitimately fascinated by, it has completely captured your attention, or it won't. If it doesn't, you set it aside, you move on to the next thing. Engage with it until you find the one that you're really fascinated by. Then you're gonna go into the process of gaining mastery and in the process of actually getting so good that they can't ignore you of acquiring the skill set that I was just talking about in that process it's either going to develop into a passion something where you're actually good at you've got the whole Greek notion of techni that my friends is when you fall in love with something when it, and in that passion you're going to decide at some point is this sort of a private, quiet passion that I have. Like I have a passion for video games. I love them, but they are not my purpose. So engaging with that, it's very clear to me. I love it, I enjoy it, it's very fun. But my real purpose in life is to teach other people how to leverage video games to build a mindset. Okay? And that focus on helping other people build a mindset to escape the matrix, to see what happens to the world, that is my purpose. But that was a decision. But at the end of the day, everything comes back to the thing I have decided is my purpose. So recognizing that it's a decision is very, very key.